this one? Yeah, that's right. Someone's meeting me here a little later. All right, how much is that? Oh, uh, the price is right up there on that side. Well, can you make a sandwich out of canned truffles from the look of Steele's kitchen? I don't think she cooks that much. I don't think Cass cares what he eats, do you? I don't understand. You know, why would she run off to Playland when she was about to see Peter? Maybe she wanted to play. Oh, shut up. I'm sorry. I know how nervous you are. I, really. Well, aren't you? Cass, I have more confidence in Cecile than you do. I just wish she'd have left the original ticket so then we could get on with this whole thing. You expect me to go running off to Bay City Downs with her in danger? No proof she's in danger. That's probably her now. Get it. Who is it? Peter. Why are you still there? Because I'm waiting to hear from Cecile. Well, so am I. She's late for dinner. She's late for her dinner with Peter. I, I thought she might have said something to one of you about where she was headed or how late she'd be. I'll tell you where she's headed. She's headed for trouble. What's going on? All I know is she took off at that amusement park and it was for your benefit. Mine. This whole lousy, stinking investigation is because of you. And don't pretend you don't know that. What are you talking about? She's been keeping some very strange company lately. She's been meeting weirdos in these seedy dives, paying for information. One of these types had his place trashed and hasn't been seen since. Except by Felicia and Cecile, who claim that they found his body stuffed in his refrigerator. Cass, are you on something? You're the one who's on something. You're on a massive ego trip, and Cecile may pay for it. Would you calm down, please? Listen, Peter, I'm sorry. We're very worried over here. Well, why the devil wasn't I told this was going on? Uh, probably because we just didn't know how far Cecile would go with all of this. Yes. Yeah. For you, Petey, baby. It's all for you. Look, Cash, yelling at me isn't going to help. Now, are you serious about this amusement park bit? No, oh, I made it up. Then you really think she's in danger? Of course I think she's in danger. Well, then I'll go find her. Oh, we'll go find her. I'll meet you there. You stay put in case she calls. Come on. Where are you going? To save Cecile from herself, if that's possible. David's really angry. And, the, and then he hit me. And I fell. And then... And then, yes, what happened then? I can't. Yes, you can. You can tell me. What do you see? There's a light. Someone turned on a light. No, there's a flash of light. And then a, from a ring, a hand, a gun, and then there's a shot. Oh, a flash of light. Let's talk about the person with the gun, Sally. She shot David. David's dead. She shot David? Yes. It was a woman. Do you know her? Can't see. Who is the woman with the gun?
This part is brought to you by April Fresh Downy. The fabric softener that gives your wash that skin-loving downy softness. An airy April freshness your whole family loves. How do you know the person with the gun is a woman, Sally? Her hand, a woman's hand, a woman's ring. Are you sure? Yes, she shot David. I want you to look up now. Look up. Yes, that's right. Now tell me, can you see her face? No, I can't. I won't. Sally, you've got to try her. Catelyn. Catelyn didn't do it. Cat, she did it. Who is she? I don't know. I'm scared. You're too frightened to see her face? I have to for Catelyn. Okay, Sally. Let's come back now. We are no longer in that room in the country club. Catelyn needs me. Sally, I am your friend. I do not want you to hurt anymore. You're my friend. That's right. Now, I want you to close off that memory. Forever. Forever. Even if someone hypnotizes you, you will not remember. You will not see the ring, or the hand, or the gun. Do you see them now? No. You won't remember anything more than you did before. Just the flash of light. Just the light. That's right. Now, there's something else I want you to accept, Sally. Catelyn is dead. Repeat that. Catelyn is dead. You cannot help him anymore, Sally. He's dead. The memories will not help. Nothing will. Catelyn is dead. He's dead. Whenever anyone mentions Catelyn's name, you will think, you will know that Catelyn is dead. Now, let's come back to that room and that night. After the flash of light, what do you see? Nothing. There's a shot. Yes, yes, and then? It's dark, it's all dark. You lost consciousness. Yes, I must have. All right, Sally, now I'm going to count three, and you will awake refreshed and alert. One, two, three. Did it work? Did I remember? No. I'm sorry. It was just about the same as before, the flash of light, the shots. The light was from a ring, a woman's hand, a, a ring. Sally, that is not what you said while you were under. I must have. Let me tell you what I think you might be doing. No, I'm not doing anything. I remember. Do you? It came back to me. But now I... Uh... Sally, what I suspect is that you may be adding details from the genuine part of the memory. No. It's not an uncommon occurrence. I don't understand. When the patient wants something very badly, the conscious mind will add to what it does know from dreams, images from wishes, in your case, you want to clear Catelyn Ewing's name. Catelyn is dead. So what do you think? It might work. Molly's nice enough. Well, yeah, all you have to do is call her up, 
Shall we pick her up a little early, get her to the country club, one soda, then you get a call from home. From you. Now you won't forget. Hey, emergency, your great aunt Hattie or something like that. Take her there and dump her when all I want to do is be with her. Oh, uh, next time. Next time. So she doesn't hate me. And she won't. You'll have plenty of time, a half an hour to turn on the charm, right? Then you'll get to the job in plenty of time. How about dessert? Mm. What'd you have in mind? Well, if uh, you can wait a while, I could take a break and join you. Oh, honey, haven't you noticed? I'll wait and you. <laughs> wait. Maybe I should just tell her I came down with something. What? Fear. Hey, come on, an hour with her is better than nothing. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. I'll tell him, but I'll, I'll tell him. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Goodbye. Bad news, guys. What's up? Excuse me, I gotta make a call. Ben, the phone call is for you. The job's off. You kidding? No, the guy from the private party called and said that he overestimated the number of people that he would need so he wouldn't need you anymore. Oh, hey, that's <laughs> a shame, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. Anyway, he said that he's gonna send ten bucks by through trouble. <laughs> trouble? <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Now you can pick up the princess, like you said, spend the whole night with her after the evening, that is. One other detail, I don't belong to the country club. Marley's sister invited you, right? Didn't she? Yeah, I still don't get that. Come on, you were there with a fancy car, your hot shot clothes. You were one of their kind. Yeah, but how long can I pull that off? <laughs> Dinner? I beg your pardon? Would you like to have dinner with me? No, I, I have a dinner date, thank you. You don't know what you're missing. Well, I'll just have to leave it to my imagination now, won't I? Can we have a floor, Mr. Rabbit? You got any lettuce, kid? <laughs> what? Money. Sure. Check for further instructions. Really, Wallingford, what do you think this is? Mission Impossible? Not you again. Look, Bug, if you don't stop bothering me, I'm gonna call Elmer Fudd, okay? Wait a minute. Uh, you know where the roller coaster is? I can give you more thrills than that. Thanks. I'll find it myself. to believe you really think that I manufactured this whole thing about a woman's hand and a ring it's hard to say Sally 
The other possibility is that your subconscious mind is protecting you. Then do you think that there is more for me to remember? Frankly, Sally, I doubt it. You've been in a very deep trance twice now. The memory's been identical. But if there is more, then... And no, no, Sally, you see, that could put you in a very delicate mental condition. Now, I want you to promise me something. What? That if there should be the slightest indication of anything cracking that mental shield, that you will call me instantly. Then you think that I could possibly remember... I think it's highly unlikely. But if the slightest glimmer should occur, I want to be the one to help you with it. All right. You see, if you make this public knowledge, Sally, you could incur a serious trauma. Or if an amateur were to help you with this, you might lose the memory altogether. Do you understand? Yes, of course I do. I, I still find it very hard to believe that I made this whole thing up. Well, it's so real to me. I understand, Sally. Think consciously for a moment. Think about that night in the country club. Think about the glimmer of light, the shot. Do you recall them? Yes. Now, think about the woman's hand and the ring. Do they seem real to you? I don't, I, I don't know for sure anymore. Well, you see, with patience and time, fantasy and reality will, will separate themselves in your mind. Thank you very much for all your help. Oh, I'm just sorry we couldn't accomplish more. Take care of yourself, Sally. I had to do that, Sally, for your own good. To keep you safe. Must be tough raising a son all by yourself, huh? He never sees his mom at all. Well, guess I just went out of bounds. He's a good kid. Well, he's got a good, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, a role model. <laughs> Thanks. They sure grow fast. Yeah, don't they, Jeff? You know, I bet sometimes you makes you feel like starting all over again, doesn't it? You mean with the uh, diapers and that whole scene? Nothing doing. Oh, come on now. Wasn't it worth it? Thank you. Tom and Cena loves that car, man. <laughs> well, just remember to have it back in one hour. Hey, would I let you drive up to the Love Estate in your car? Hmm. You'll probably think I'm the delivery boy no matter what I drive. <laughs> in those threads, no way. You got no problem. Okay? All right. Take care. Drive smoothly. Yeah. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Larry. I'm Jane. Sandy. I've been out at the search site. Nothing, huh? No. I think it's time we gave up. I also think it's time we start talking about some kind of memorial service. Look, Larry, there's a chance that Catlin's body is never going to be found. And Blade needs something that'll mark an end. Maybe you do, too. Look, I'm fine. You sure? I'm just not much for remembering in that way. Speeches, platitudes. Morning is kind of a private thing. Look, my morning is over. Now, we've got to get on with everything else. Yeah, well, I honestly think this might help. Whatever you want. Well, Larry, I, I was kind of hoping that maybe we could get together and work out the details. No, why don't you and Blaine take care of that? And I'll contribute to the space or the flowers, whatever. You just give me a call. Well, if that's what you want. Yes, it is. Larry, sometimes things don't end that quickly, no matter how badly we want them to. And if you don't deal with your feelings... Look, I'm dealing with my feelings in my own way. Yeah? Yeah. MJ, would you tell Sandy what my directive was earlier today? Mr. Catlin, you and file this closed. Look, man, I don't want to argue about it. Thanks. I'll let you know when and where. You'll be there? Yeah, sure, I'll be there. Larry, the investigation has to stay secret, not your feelings. Look, McKenna and I are not sending signals to anybody, and that's final. Okay. 
somebody pretty high up was in on what happened to my brother. Why are you so sure? Because they knew what time he was being transported, they knew the route he was taking, they knew everything. All right, and we will find whoever it is sooner or later who can throw yourself in the crowd. I'm fine. You need some rest. Yeah, who says so? You keep driving yourself like this, you're gonna miss something. Let's just get back to work. And where is the forensic report? Oh, thanks. with the memorial service, huh? I think we have to. Although Larry wasn't too keen about it. Well, people deal with grief in different ways. And, yeah, some people don't deal with it at all. Yeah, I'll tell you something. I spoke with Larry earlier. He wants me to put a stop on the appeal process altogether. And I hope Blaine doesn't hear about it. I mean, at least not for a while. Well, maybe I just won't do anything at all. That way I can tell some people things are still open and others... Things are pretty well closed. It's amazing the way you attorneys can say things the same way, backwards. Uh, that's a gift. <laughs> Hi. Come on. Hi, honey. Are you out there? Yeah, I talked to the head of the search party at the crime site. Is there anything? Baby, it was a flash flood. Now it could take months. But they've got to keep trying. Look, they're not going to. They're calling off the search today. It's hard so hard. I know, Blaine. But it's not over. Honey. It's not. We are going to keep trying to clear Catlin's name in the courts. Things are still open. Look, I'm sorry. I have to leave right now. Okay. Oh, hi, Mark. So, thanks a lot, Mark. Excuse me. Tickets? Uh, how many books? Do you remember, uh, cats? I don't have any money, would you? Perfect. Three books. Thank you. Do you remember seeing a very pretty blonde? Um, yeah, sure, hundreds of them. Tall ones, short ones, all pretty. Well, this one's about all this tall, I would say. Yeah, and dressed for dinner. Like we are, dressed Yeah, what's happening in there? Some uh, crazy dress-up thing or something? Have you seen her? Listen, do you have any idea how many uh, entrances there are to this place? Come on, we're wasting time. Here, take this. Come on. Look, this can be very important. Uh, it, it, she couldn't have come in more than 15 minutes ago. Sorry, pal. They're just tickets to me. Any luck? No, nothing. I hope we're overreacting. I don't care whether we are or not. We have to find her. Listen, I think we should split up. All right? All right, let's be back here in 30 minutes. Okay. Right. All right. No, thanks. Have you seen her? Oh. I love this. Yeah, I'll bet you do. Love it. Pretty blonde, huh? Right. Dressed for dinner, huh? Yes, yes. I get off in a couple of hours. We can hit this next place and talk about this friend of yours. Could be I've seen her. What do you say? I say, why don't you hippity hop out of here, Buster? Uh, no. See, um, you, you'll have to get out of this car. Oh, for 
you kidding? No, see, there are a lot of other cars. If you don't mind, this is my car. Oh, your car. You have a reservation for this car. Uh -huh. Look. I get a little nauseous if I don't ride in this middle car. Now, you don't want me to get sick, do you? Mister, I'm a little emotionally unstable, so could you just be nice to me, please? Look, I'm not moving, lady. Great. Then push over so you get yourself a partner with this ride. Fine with me. I have to be honest. Are you going to sit down or what? Oh, hi. No, I'm looking for something. So could you just wait a while before you take off? Just hold off, okay? What, are you some kind of troublemaker or something? Everyone is scared to death as it is. I'm sure they won't mind waiting. I mean, what's the big deal? So they'll scream a few seconds later. Look, you can either sit down or you can get out. You got that, lady? Ted, this was an amusement park. sick about you. Well, it's just that, you know, you left that note saying you were coming straight home. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I ended up going for a walk. All this time in the heat? You all right? Yeah, I'm really tired, though. Is, uh, where's Kevin? He's upstairs. Sally, did something happen? No, don't badger. She needs privacy. Me, badger? Excuse me, I want to see Kevin. She keeps thinking of Catlin. He's on her mind all Kevin the time. Kevin is his dad and Liz. He's dead. Stormy. Hot. Breathtaking. Santa Barbara sizzles. Santa Barbara, the spectacular daytime saga, premieres today, 3 Eastern, 2 Central and Pacific. Wait a minute. Just this morning you were saying that there was hope for Catelyn. But... He's dead. I know that now. Well, how could you know? I don't know. I just do. Oh, Sally, you said you were never going to give up. Uh, Alice, just drop it, okay? Sally, why don't you go up and see Kevin? He's in the city. Well, I can't bear to see her give up hope. Well, I don't, I don't know what made her suddenly decide to accept this, but, um, I think it's for the best. Oh, I don't agree. Oh, they had such a beautiful romance. It was old-fashioned. They were so young. They were in love. It Oh, 
are worth it. You are. How could you not love me? After I helped spear Catelyn for Sally. How? Oh. Oh, Faith. Be all right. Get up slowly. Too. Maybe the pros. Maybe not. You'd like that. He can do what he wants to as long as he does it well. well. What about you? Did you ever play football? Yeah. High school. For a while. Were you good? <laughs> not as good as Carter. You really think he can make it big, huh? If he keeps working at it. The main thing is it'll give him a leg up. Yeah. Everybody can use that. You couldn't? That's what life's about, getting that chance and going with it. Yeah, I know what you mean, but chance isn't all. You know, you gotta take that chance and run with it. What do you mean, bad news? Smashed up the car. Time I think I'd see her, it turns out to be somebody else. I know, I know. Wait a minute, look. What? Where's she going? Come on. Well, you didn't get hurt, did you? No, nothing like that. How bad is it? Rear tail light and part of the bumper. What happened? I backed up into a tree, man. The car's longer than I thought it was. Eighty thousand dollars. You get more car. We're gonna have to fork over for this, you know? Yeah, I know. I just don't know how. Well, I'm gonna pay my share. Well, you're not responsible. Come on. Of course I am. Well, didn't I make a big deal about how I love to ride my gorgeous car? Kids this age always have lots of secrets. I thought you told me your boy told you everything. Well, he does. Pretty much. The heavy stuff, anyway. Well, I don't know about Thomasina. You know, some things she tells me, some things she tells her mother. How come? I don't know, I guess she figures that way she doesn't have to trust anybody too much. Keep it down, will you? If my dad finds out, he'll never understand. Are you sure? No way. The main thing is we gotta get the cast to fix that car. Yeah. Before I have to get it back to Chansky's tomorrow. That's a big order. Maybe yeah. not. Maybe I got this friend. He works for an outlet that fixes foreign cars. Jerry at the hot body shops? Right. He's good, he's fast, but he's not cheap. He's gonna wipe out everything we've made this entire summer. Listen, I'm, I can't tell you how sorry I am. <sighs> really. It could have just as well have been me. We both were crazy over that hot car and I'm... Oh, wow. What else? How am I gonna pick up Marley? If I try to drive that car without a taillight, I'll get a ticket in five minutes. Well, what about your own car? Oh, so yeah. you've seen that car? Well, I know Marley. She won't care. She may not, but if Donna Love sees me in my old clunker, she won't let me up the driveway. There may still be another way. What, what? way? Way here. Blaine, I want you to know how sorry I am about the accident. Thank you, Jamie. The whole family will be at the service. Thank you. Uh, I'll be back. Excuse me. Well, this is just my day that stood me up. Oh, I'll go on with you, lad. I'm serious. Uh, MJ and I are supposed to have dinner together. Oh, MJ, uh, I saw her at the precinct when I went over to talk to Larry. She probably just got tied up. Oh, yeah, I guess. Hey, MJ's a nice girl. Yeah, she is, but her memory's rotten. I hope. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad I got to see you and Blaine. Yeah, me too. Sandy, I've I've wanted to call, but uh, I didn't know if that'd be laying something else on you, you know. Oh man, I understand. You know, I <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying this, but uh, I miss talking to you. 
Oh, yeah. I bet you miss my pompous lectures, too, huh? Well, not too much. <laughs> it is strange, though. When I first found out about Catlin, the first thing that popped into my head was that I wanted to talk to my brother about it. Maybe we should try to talk more often. Well, I'd like that. Good. I miss talking to you, too. of another world. All right. <laughs> I mean, this doesn't do you. I don't know what will. Mm. Ooh, it smells good. Mm. You know, if I didn't eat my dinner, I'd come along right with you. Um, <laughs> well, we're going to stop by the apartment and get a blanket, and then we're going to swing by and pick up Marley. Does she need a chaperone for this, too? You're so mean. <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on here? You been raiding my kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> well, since Ben doesn't have to work, we're all going on a picnic. And Aunt Lily is loaning us her nice big car. A picnic? And a coat and tie? Oh, that's the newest fashion, honey. You know, reverse pump. <laughs> <laughs> By this time next year, all the kids will be going around looking like lawyers. I tell you, Donna would love anybody who came to a picnic dress like that, including you. <laughs> well, anyway, we're kidding. <laughs> All right. Have a good time. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Kids, have fun. Bye. What about Marley? She's expecting to go to the country club. You worry too much. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Now, honey, now don't let those ants get one bite of Grant's teeth. They'll eat it up. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> what a crew. How did that happen? Oh, well, you know Thomasina got a notion. Well, how come they're taking your car? Sort of benevolent gesture on my part. Well, you didn't need to do that. Ben has that tin Lizzie of his. You know, you men always think too much about cars. Yeah, but how come a picnic all of a sudden? Well, what are you? You're an antique, huh? Now, don't you ever get a spontaneous idea, you know? Just get up and go? Yeah, but it was something funny about the way they just cut out. Like they had some kind of big secret. Well, Ben time. I got one of my own. Oh? Mm -hmm. What's that? I'm dying to have another piece of pie. <laughs> <laughs> mm. What can I say? Oh, Larry and I were so into that paperwork, I lost mm. track of time. <laughs> well, I figured it was something like that. I'm sorry, Jamie. Forgive me. I might if I ever get to take you to dinner. You too swamped now? No. No, she's not. Yeah, Look, I said you're not. Now take off. Have some fun. We'll be at the Lions then if you need to call. You want right? me to come back when we're through? Look, look, there's a guy here who's trying to take you out. Will you forget the police work? Take off? You heard the man? I mean, you know, there's dedication and it's ridiculous. No. Leave. Now. <laughs> Bye. So long. I'm mortified. I... Oh, hi. You in here. Oh, hi, baby. Oh, honey, no, no. Listen, Clarice, I, I won't be home till late. Yeah, very. I'm sorry. No, I'm not working on the Catlin case. Uh, just all the stuff that backed up while I was on it. Okay, all right. Listen, I'll just wake you up when I get there. Okay, bye-bye. I love you. Something in here, I'm gonna find it.
you? Are you really? I just want to get this thing over with, okay? Get what over with? The tunnel of love? Yeah, that's right. Could you leave an empty boat between us and you? When your boyfriend comes, that is. No, my boyfriend isn't coming. I, I don't uh, have a date. I wonder if she wants to get this over with. What are you all dressed up for, anyway? Well, if you must know, I'm, I'm going on a date. <laughs> But I just thought you said you yeah, had it's a... it's a long story, really. Just go on, go on, get in. You don't want to miss the boat. of another world was brought to you by Scope Mouthwash. Cool, tingly Scope works as good as it tastes. Scope helps erase bad breath in seconds and gives you minty, fresh breath that lasts. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of another world.